prayers. Almighty God, who in your infinite wisdom and providential goodness have appointed the offices of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of society and the adjustment of humanity, we beseech you to look upon with your abundant favor these your servants, whom you have been pleased to call to the performance of such important trust in this land. Let your blessing descend upon them here assembled and grant that they may, as in your presence, treat and consider all matters that shall come under their deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the good of those whose interests you've committed to their charge. Amen. That's why I come this side. No, I don't know. Item number two in the order paper communication from the chair. Thank you, uh, colleagues. I welcome you to, to today's sitting. I'm sorry, I'm late for around 30 minutes, close to 30 minutes because of the developments that we had today. I was getting a briefing uh, whereby 11 of our colleagues, the ladies, were brutally arrested. Brutally in, in a very, very, in, a, in an extremely demeaning way. Uh, some are bleeding, uh, some the clothes were torn, it was as if they were arresting terrorists. I, I don't know what someone was up to, you know. Of course, I had my issue with the honorable colleagues because they had already petitioned us and we had promised to them that we are going to have, we had already called the minister and prime minister. So I had thought they would wait for that time. But you see, that cannot justify the manner. My concern is with the manner, the manner of arrest. And you shamelessly do it at the gates of parliament. Yeah? So I don't know whether really we are safe if, if people can be sent just at the gate to pick people and beat. And I, I don't know, I don't know whether these people are powerful. We, they considered them to be powerful like robots, and therefore you need to come like as if you're strangling, you undress, you will be shamed, you humiliate. I, I really don't know. And, and my question is, who are these people working for? Huh? Because, because I think government needs to go back and reflect. Who is behind these people? And who are they? I don't think these are people who are working to protect government or to promote an image of government. I don't think so. These people must be working for an invisible hand that is aimed at bringing down government. Because I don't see any single justification. But colleagues, there's a very, very critical item which I want us to first handle uh, before I allow anything else uh, so that after I allow I will allow a reaction to my communication and all that. I know it's a boiling issue, and I can see the Minister for Internal Affairs here. He will also be given an opportunity to speak, but uh, I'll, I'll give guidance on how best we can react to this matter. Uh, na na number two, colleagues, uh, I received a petition from the Office of the Director for Public Prose uh, Prosecutions, and uh, it's related to their payment of, uh, uh, they were requesting that we amend the income tax uh, uh, act to cater for the exemption, for the exemption because they are like judicial officers. The committee cannot handle this issue because it cannot generate it on its own. So chairman, I, I refer this matter to you uh, under rule 199, rule one, so that you expeditiously 
consider it. This is a very urgent issue. The president pronounced himself, you know, it's, it's very, very clear. We need to take action on it. So chairman, I refer it to you. Preferably you should finish it by tomorrow. Oh, oh, eh? So that is considered when you're handling the income tax bill. Okay. Uh, colleagues with that, like I told you, I have a very, very urgent issue which we have been postponing uh, over time. And this is the issue of the supplementary budget. And I want us to pronounce ourselves on it because I cannot keep an issue on the order paper moving forward, moving forward. And yet we as a house, we have powers to decide on it. Okay? So I want us to first handle that issue. And uh, once we handle it, then I will allow uh, reactions to my communication and matters of national importance. But I request, I just beseech you, let us hold our fire in regard to these other issues. I will give you space and enough space. Yes, it's too hot, ensure it doesn't burn you. Procedure, Honorable Tinker. In the meantime, as Honorable Tinker Simile comes in the public gallery this uh, afternoon, we have a delegation of district council speakers from us in the district, represented by Honorable Wasinga Jawab, Honorable Kuguziwe uh, Ronald, Honorable Kiza Kenneth Nyendo, and Honorable Simile Florin. They've come to observe proceedings of the House. Please join me in welcoming them. And uh, I was supposed to meet you with your honorable member, but time has not allowed. I'll ensure next time uh, we meet. I really had a lot of commitments, but your members uh, really pushed me to meet you when the time couldn't allow. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, right honorable speaker. Uh, right honorable speaker, I'm moving under rule eight, um, where, <clears throat> you it's not to disagree with your decision but i want your guidance in the circumstances where the supplementary budget is providing money for those who are now uh, at the gate to emit mayhem against us uh, against us and uh, you are saying you 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 want to even give them priority uh, than discussing the matter of, of of reacting to what you have just communicated about the arrest of of, of our uh, our colleagues, brutal arrest of our colleagues, and uh, uh, because uh, it is within your power, and uh, I will seek your guidance. Why why don't we give priority to the matter of arresting our colleagues? Uh, uh, then, uh, then we 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 after that we move to the issue of of giving them money to brutally arrest us uh, at the gates of parliament. I, I seek your guidance, right, honourable speaker. Uh, thank you, honourable. You, you see, honourable. In the end, if you find the money you're giving is to make you suffer, you refuse. The decision is yours. But what I've told, I've not suffocated anyone. What I've just requested is just one item. Then I open up. Because you see, me as a reader, I foresee. And I make my research on certain matters. There is a matter, there is a matter, there is a matter which we must finish today. So that your schools, your uh, health centers, and I use to and all that, we decide whether they get their money or not, or we keep delaying that money will go, we, they will receive money rate, it goes back to the consolidated fund. So that's why I'm saying, just around me only one item, I open up, I'll give you enough item, uh, enough time, colleagues. Rob, would you allow me on that? Would you, do you think, uh, can you guide, uh, let me get the guidance of Rob. Only one item, only one item, colleagues. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, I read this team very constrained and uh, I'm very sure the rest of the House is with, with us on this matter. We, 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 are, we are here to hear the Speaker guiding us on how he's going to proceed on this matter. I am constrained. I will, allow my, I will ask my members to give the Speaker the benefit of doubt and I hope this matter does not take 
more than we, we can tolerate to listen and then take a decision. Otherwise, I may not be able to control the, the mood in this house, sorry, no speaker. Thank you. I'll ask my team to give the speaker the benefit of doubt and listen to what is on the floor. Thank you. Just 30 minutes, we will be done. Now, uh, colleagues, number two, uh, we had already gone to the Committee of Supply. There are views. I want us to agree on how we, had, we handle supply. So I remove uh, down to the table for Committee of Supply. Then I pick your views on how we handle the supply, and then we move forward. Committee of Supply. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, honorable colleagues, as you remember, we had we had divergent views on how to proceed on this matter, and I want us to move when we've reconciled the position, uh, so that we have uh, one way as the house of handling this supplementary that causing much fracas. So Chair Budget, uh, have you met with your team and you think we, we can have a solution to the issue that we are raised? Yeah, thank you, Right on our speaker and colleagues. These two last two weeks, we had a standoff on the issue of supplementary, especially on the Part A, which calls the, which falls within the three percent legal limit. So we've consulted, and there's two members raised pertinent issues. And the minister also gave us information which we, we are still processing. And we've agreed that we pass a deal with part B, which requires prior approval by parliament, an amount of uh, 1,524,969,000. Nine hundred and sixty-one million one hundred and thirty-nine thousand four hundred and sixty-eight Uganda shillings. That was the agreement as we defer Part A for further consultation. Thank you. Now, Chair, what I pick is that uh, Part A is for three percent, which was uh, where the the minority report was coming from. Three percent which requires a retrospective approval. That was the contentious part, because even the minority report, that's where it was in. So the chair colleagues is saying that we stand over that since we don't have time pressure in terms of handling it. Then we go on part B, which requires prior approval of parliament. And that one, even this, the, the minority report from what I remember, didn't have any issue, but on Chivumbi will also uh, uh, guide us on that. We handle that. Then we, sh we stand over part A, which we shall come back uh, after reconcil reconciliation between the chair and mover of the minority report when we have enough time to scrutinize it. Honorable right. Chivumbi. Right, Honorable Chair. I because somehow we have accountability to give to members of the house and the general public. And I will ask for a minute or two. One, honorable colleagues, we have two sets of supplementaries before this parliament. We have the one under 3% that is here for approval. That one is loaded with most of the questionable items. And most of those items are where members have 
huge opinion against. Now, the one that requires prior approval, which is before us, the chairperson has talked about, has monies that by and large is not controversial because these are small monies for districts, wages for small, for World Bank, for grow project, for which you cannot hold on to for long. Therefore, as we cross-examine to detail the extent of impunity, only 3%, let us not curtail the service delivery on the prior. But also it will give us an opportunity to really check the Minister of Finance to the extent they're applying 3%. So I am in total agreement I am in total agreement. Clarification? Yes. Thank you, Honorable. Honorable, I'm seeking clarification from your communication, maybe to be guided or to be told the law that stops this crucial money to be captured in the 3%, and the 3% captures what is not useful. Why can't we have the useful expenditure be captured in the 3% so that we look at that other than Handling the other one, then you bring 3% and we capture what is useless. Why don't we fit in this one, in this one, and we hand at once? Chair, the 3% is as given, government has already spent. And what is before parliament, the law requires them to come here within four months, lay it on table, then we process it for whether it is justifiable or not justifiable. And the law provides, if you find it unjustifiable, there is a remedy under the law. Now, the, the prior approval is monies that government cannot spend without parliamentary approval. And the two cannot be mixed. The two cannot be mixed. So that's why it is hum, our humble opinion is that we deal further. Thank you member uh i would like you to clarify on this uh when you talk about three percent having been approved unappropriated that's correct and we agree as a principle however the government always used that opportunity to spend within the three percent items that were uh, that were rejected by the house they use that to finance those activities and now they say you had already approved it you know, and that is where we are interested to know that within the three percent, what are the items are funded, and those those items fit the decision that this house took when we were appropriating. I'm 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 a scientist, and I'm a bit slow, so I'm not from the school of arts. I'm from the science bias, so I'm very slow. In, yeah, I'm from mathematics, so I'm very slow and, and very deliberate. Now, when I was saying Syria, we're on the same page. We are saying the extent of the impunity has been on the abuse of 3%. That's where they've loaded all controversial items, including those where parliament during the parliamentary process rejected. We are saying we are staying approval of all those items as of now, until we are fully satisfied as parliament that those were monies well spent and there is value for money. And if we found them wanting at an appropriate time, then we will pronounce ourselves. Then the power we have is that we have not approved them as of now. So we have gone for areas that are not controversial and provide services to the roads, to the wages, to those other things for which our people matter, for which they, you know what, under 3%. That, it is catch 22. I'm not the Minister of Finance to speak for this, but it's catch 22. So my humble view is that Parliament agrees with the position for us to go ahead and approve the prior. And then we delay and continue to scrutinize all the other controversial items. We are delaying the entire 3%. No single approval of the 3% as of now. Your clarification. Uh, Mr. Speaker, some of these items are constitutional. 
And there are certain uh, spending that have been offloaded on the 3% that bears on the constitutionality of uh, our spending. For example, government is lending money to an entity. And our constitution, Article 159, the power of government to borrow or lend, is very clear that government cannot raise any borrowing, cannot lend without the approval of parliament, prior approval of parliament. But government is now going behind parliament to spend, to lend without authority of parliament. It is very unconstitutional. And when somebody goes to court, you know parliament will be embarrassed. I can assure you, I can read here. Article 159, power of parliament to borrow or lend. Government shall not borrow, guarantee, or raise a loan on behalf of itself or any other public institution, authority, or person, except as authorized by parliament and an act of parliament. An act of parliament made under this clause two of article shall provide the terms and conditions of the loan. And therefore we are giving money where parliament has not scrutinized the terms. This is unconstitutional. You need to, because now they are front loaded. So we need to be careful. Otherwise we are going to be embarrassed. Some of us may even go to court. Chair, Chair, I, I, I am a very principled politician on record, and I defend right things if they are right to be defended. In your opinion, and you are wrong, and you are not understanding issues, give yourself time. One, I'm on the same page with everyone. All controversial issues, honorable colleagues, are in three percent. We are saying we are not approving that one as of now. As of now. Then we are saying, unless people don't want to listen and they want a record, then, then the item is under three pass prior approval. The Co item is under prior approval. Colleagues, let's listen to yes. The item is under prior approval and not controversial. Now, order, order. Mr. Speaker, sir, when business come to this house, they come under distinct headings, supplementaries, or even the appropriation are bills. At the very least are bills. What we refer to as votes in other laws, we call them clauses. Right now we have before this house, the supplementary estimate, which is a bill. And we are required as a house to look at close by close and deal with it at once. Is my colleague in order to mislead the house as if we have two or three or four different businesses before this house? And to the extent that we should only separate a bill and deal with certain clauses which are votes and leave others. If is he in order? Thank you. Now, Honorable Jonathan, the supplementary appropriation bill will come after supply. Article 156, clause 3 of the Constitution, where in respect of any financial year, the supplementary estimate or supplementary estimates have been approved by Parliament in accordance with clause two of this article, a supplementary appropriation bill shall be introduced into parliament in the financial year next following. That financial year to which the estimates rate providing for the appropriation of the sum so approved for the purposes specified in those estimates. Mr. Speaker, you are right. That is just documentation. The approval is done, but for the record of this house, it is documented in a bill. When it comes in next year, we don't process it here. No. It doesn't. 
there is no bill which is not processed here and approved here. That is subject to interpretation, yeah. but I will not argue oh. with you. Oh, colleagues. On supplementary, on, suppre on supplementary is very clear. The but, bill comes after supply. For example, some money has already been spent. It will be captured in the bill if we approve it. And the bill will be approved, will be brought here. Honorable Chair, Honorable Chair, I think, Jonathan, I would like to inform you. One, Honorable. A, a supplementary, Honorable. Honorable Jonathan. Jonathan, Honorable Jonathan, I would like to inform you and Honorable colleagues, an item cannot enter supplemental appropriation bill, which will even come next year for this year, if it's not approved. That's why, honorable colleagues, the powers for us to go and for once, and I appeal to you, for once decisively deal with the Minister of Finance is for us to delay this approval. Now, if we delay this approval, then we will consistently go ahead and examine the extent of abuse. We can even reach a level of saying, Auditor General, go and look at those expenditures before our approval. That's why I appeal to honorable colleagues. I know it is a new concept. It is the one of its lot. That the logic behind this thinking is that we are curtailing Minister of Finance to go ahead with impunity to bring us 3%. Now, if we go up and approve everything as it is, that means it's game over. Our powers are done. But my humble appeal to you is that my own understanding is that the three percent can I be protected? My own understanding is that if we delay the three percent, when I book the details, I don't want to give on this floor. But if we delay the three percent, we are going in July. Listen now, let me give you in July. We are going to to be in a, a to have a new part of procedure. Procedure. Oh, pro procedure, I start with Nsamba, sorry. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I don't know why uh, Honorable Mwanga Chivumbi want to be lenient today. And uh, I want to understand him. But what I'm pleading with him, we deal with every aspect of the supplementary. We disapprove what we don't want. And we say, this one parliament is not approving. Then, when we say we are not approving this item, we send it to the necessary process that it requires. But if we are here to say that this section, we are not going to touch it, let us not fear to disapprove of what we refused to appropriate. Is that procedure? And let us, yes, Mr. Speaker. So procedure question? Mr. Speaker, <laughs> are we proceeding well? <laughs> when Honorable Mwanga Chivumbi, the member we rely on, always here on matters of financial management in this country, comes here and starts saying that this section we leave it. No. Mr. Speaker, let us look at every section. The members disapprove or approve. Thank you. Let me first rule on the let, facts. Rather, let no. me wind up my case. No, 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 there is a procedure matter. <laughs> There's a procedure matter. I have to rule. Now, Colleagues, and the decision will be yours in the end. I, because I'll put a question. The decision will be yours. Number one, what Honorable Chivumbi is giving is a view. So, <laughs> a view, eh? here we listen to views, whether we agree with the views or not. But number two, from what I pick from Honorable Chivumbi, colleagues, let's listen to one another. I don't know what's going up, you know. What I'm getting from Honorable Chivumbi, he is saying that we have found a problem with money spent under 3%. And we need more time as a house to look into it. Listen, listen. 
So we defer it. Okay? We do, and I'll put a question so you will vote your way. So he's saying we defer it. But we have also money which is which requires prior approval of government before it can be spent. And that money is holding very, very critical items. Very, very critical items. And he's saying, if we are finding a problem with this component of the budget under, under A, why don't we first hold on to it? We don't give it approval. Then we clear this one, which we need most. Okay? After clearing it, listen, after clearing it, we come back here, we process that one under 3%, we scrutinize it very well. After scrutinizing it very well, we put it a vote here, we either accept it or we reject it. Rob? Rob? Oh, I will allow you. Rob, let's listen to the lead of opposition. Thank you, Honorable Chair. There are, there are two ways of dealing with this dilemma. The, the first is going the way the Honorable Chivumbi is proposing. The second is for the minister to move an amendment motion to the earlier motion. And that will also give you the same output. There's actually no crisis. You can deal with it the, the Honorable Muwanga way or with an amended motion by the minister or a member moving a motion to amend the original motion. All the powers lie in this house. But I want to leave to the speaker to use the two options available. And thank you. Of course, that's what I want to do. I'll give the minister a chance. I wanted to get your views. Then we had a procedural matter from Jonathan. Mr. Speaker, you had communicated that a meeting took place in which some positions were harmonized. Would it be procedurally correct to state the names of the members who attended that meeting on the record here? so that we can follow, and where the meeting took place. Thank you. Uh, honorable colleague, these meetings have been going on, and I think, listen, 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 if we had come to a conclusion in any meeting, I would have communicated the position we agreed on. What was agreed was, I bring the issue here, the house you decide, and that's what I'm doing. So there is nothing that was, that was decided anywhere. I don't want anyone to be accused that they went anywhere and agreed on anything, no. But what, uh, uh, what, what we are all saying is, no one is saying from, what, from whoever has spoken that we approve three person, which you have a problem with. If they were saying you approve it, and I have an option also, I have another option of bringing all of them but I wanted us to have a compromise here. We agree on how best to approach. Let me Okupa, then Omara. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mr. Chairman, first, first to the Minister of Finance, never ever again should you bring such things which confuse, which make, make a mix up in the house. Because now we are here hitting at one another, yet you are the cause of all this mess. Two, 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 Mr. Chairman, you, 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 I, I don't want, they, because they, I, I can see where the debate's going. It's like we are now lamping everything on Honorable Kivumbi. No, when you came in, step down, I told us there is a position, there is a view. So we, we, Honorable Kivumbi was only giving a support to what proposal you have, you have put here. But I think we shouldn't waste time. The proposal moved by the leader of opposition here, I think is what should, we should go by. Let the Minister of Finance move a motion to amend the motion to separate the two items such that we deal with them separately and then we move on. Okay. Uh, I, Honorable Mara, then after Honorable Chinyamatam. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker. When this uh, appropriation bill was brought to the House, uh, the matter was referred to the Budget Committee, which discussed and processed it, and the report chair was presented to the House. 
However, there was a minority report as well. And as you know, this matter has been rather controversial. And there's been a lot of discussions between the other side, this side and the independents as well. <laughs> Consultations, yes. Now, the, the chair of budget has actually come out clearly to say, even as the, um, the majority of the, uh, uh, Jonathan, the majority of Whenever the budget committee, just, uh, yeah, the, okay. the, the majority of the budget committee members approved certain recommendations, which was presented to the house. The minority report disagreed. Point of order, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Paul Omara was part of that meeting that took place to the exclusiveness of members of parliament sitting as parliament. Is he in order to come here not to declare his interest, which he pushed in that meeting, and now he wants to persuade and hoodwink the house to buy into that position? Is he in order? Uh, Honorable Omara is in order because he is not among the pie called in the meeting. Honorable, continue. So, what has happened um, since then, right, Honorable Speaker, is that position has been harmonized between the majority report and the minority report, where the chair of the budget committee has now conceded to say, even if we have made recommendations for some approvals under the 3%, we should now state it. Uh, oh, Cooper. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, we, we take your word as the final word. You have just stated here, after ruling what Honorable Jonathan said, that Honorable Omara was in the meeting. Now Honorable Omara comes here and says, this thing has been harmonized in the meeting, as if he was, not, as if he was in the meeting. Is he in the order to now to report on the meeting where he was not? Is he in the order? Thank you. Now, Honorable colleagues, yeah. on, Honorable Omara, was part of the meeting which you had with the prime minister and you didn't you didn't you didn't conclude on it because i asked you okay whether you concluded or not since then i've not involved you in other meetings so it's up to you if you if honorable mara you've had your meetings where you've concluded on things you're out of order those, those meetings cannot be so honorable mara is out of order i had allowed honorable chinyamatama uh, thank you so much, Honorable Chair, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, honorable members, my opinion on this is that we should move the whole thing entirely because when you look at those that are in, in, in 3%, you'll find education, for example. You'll find, uh, you'll find health. So as a mother and... Uh, a person on, on uh, education, a member of parliament on education committee, we are soon going to see strikes in schools and everything. So I think we should handle it entirely than breaking it down. Thank you so much, Honorable Chair. Honorable Minister, what's your view on this? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Let, let's listen to the minister, honorable colleagues. On, honorable colleagues, I will give you time. You will have time. I'll give you another chance to speak. Let's listen to the minister. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we I don't sleep because of this motion not passing. And I want to tell you why. Mr. Chairman, can I be protected? 
Uh, on our colleagues, let's listen to the minister. Honorable Minister, you're not in order not to sleep, so we want you to sleep. So, but pr proceed. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I need to tell you why. This motion we are con that is before Parliament has items which touch the whole country. <laughs> I received phone calls from the entire country about items which have not been considered by parliament and you can imagine getting phone, phone calls from all corners of the country and i never switch off my phone mr chairman my prayer is one we moved a motion here under supplementary schedule one amounting to 2.9 Seven two million shillings, of which trillion shillings, of which we have items under three percent, amounting to one point four three four trillion, and items which require prior approval by Parliament, amounting to one point five three eight trillion, and our prayer as a government and as Minister of Finance is that Parliament considers our motion as it is. I thank you. Honorable Sister Ogwar. Right, right, Honorable Speaker, I appreciate the Minister moving the motion, and that is in order. And I think it's also in order that uh, the House should carry consultation. And this process on this particular uh, supplementary has, has been going on for the last three weeks, if I recall. Uh, but right, Honorable Speaker, because of the mood on the floor and because of the legality of the decision that, that we may take, that may have some consequences, I beg to, to amend the motion that we separate the prior from the 3%. I beg to move. Thank you. I put a question to the motion. Those in favor say and to the country, nay. The eyes have it. So, colleagues, we are going to proceed. We shall handle part, uh, part B of the schedule. Supplementary, you can't expand chapter financial year. 2022 stroke 2023, central government. Co colleagues, we are only handling money. Colleagues, from the motion, we are only handling money which requires prior approval. Uh, the one of 3% under A, we are not touching it today. So, all questions I'm putting are for Part B, which requires. Uh, which requires prior approval. I now propose a question that a total sum of Uganda shilling procedure. Mr. Speaker, Rule 154 requires that you call the vote heads vote by vote. The entire reading of uh, Rule 154 allows this house as well, when we are considering the vote, to vary it, to reduce, or to ask information to be supplemented on the particular vote. I now ask you to proceed that way so that each vote is called. Yes, uh, I, Honorable Jonathan, I, I, I totally agree with you on the rule, but here, colleagues, we also have a practice, which I believe has always been within the rules. It has been a practice over time, okay? Now, these are issues, there was no minority report on them. There was no, anyone who raised an issue. What I can do, what I can do, 
I can do it this way, that when I put a question before I allow a vote on it, if there is any member who has an issue with an item falling under that, they raise it and, and then we can, we can handle. Honorable Katuntu, do you want to guide on this? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. I think Honorable Duru should uh, consider that because it actually caters for the position you are articulating. Once an item has been called and any colleague has got an issue with that particular item, he will go on record and uh, he can make his substantive. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with it. You may consider to concede to the guidance of the chair. I'll give you a chance. I won't put a vote before, okay? Before members, uh, I'll look around if there is anyone who has an issue with any, then I give them a chance to raise it. Be because you see, I will first propose, okay? Then I listen to you, then after I put a question. Yeah, on a, yes. I now propose the question that a total sum of Uganda shillings, 457. 0637035891 be provided for as central government supplementary recurrent expenditure for the for the financial year 2022-2023. We are doing central government colleagues. I hope you have your reports. Yeah, because the whole report, it's, in, it's within the report of the committee, and it has several votes. Mr. Chair. Okay? Mr. Chair. Yes, yeah. Honorable oh, oh, no, Samba first. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, help us to know which items you're at. Yes, yeah. We have the report. Can Honorable Minister help us? We have the reports, Mr. Chair. Yes. At least we would go item by item. We know which one you're reading. Yeah, but. So that we follow. But so that see, we can respond. Colleagues, I request you, get your reports. That's why we give you iPads. I'm not going to read for you. You have to read for yourselves. I can't read for you. Chair, yeah. Chair, yeah. so, so if, if, if this can help, because you, 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 the, the procedure always say you read vote by vote, but, you, but since it's central government, there are a number of votes. You can just say from vote this number this to this vote of the central government such that is captured on record. Uh, yeah. Oh now, Minister, can you help me? You read? Yeah, let, let, let him have the votes. Mr. Mr. Chair, Chairman. In the interest of bringing moving with the, all of us together. The votes under central government, totaling the figure you have read, are the following. Vote 004, Minister of Defense. Vote 006, Minister of Foreign Affairs. Vote 010, Minister of Agriculture, Animal, Industry and Fisheries. Vote 012, Minister of Lands, Housing and Urban Development. Vote 014, Minister of Health, votes 016, Minister of Works and Transport, vote 018, Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development, vote 019, Minister of Water and Environment, vote 022, Minister of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities, vote 107, Uganda AIDS Commission, vote 114, Uganda Cancer Institute, vote 17, Uganda Tourism Board, vote 120, National Citizenship and Immigration Control, vote 121, Dire Development Authority, vote 124, Equal Opportunities Commission, vote 135, Directorate of Government Analytical Laboratory, vote 145, Uganda Prisons, vote 16, Public Service Commission, vote 152, National Agricultural Advisory Services, Vote 158, Internal Security Organization, Vote 165, Uganda Business and Technical Examination Board, 
vote 302 Mbara University of Science and Technology vote 303 Makerere University Business School vote 306 Muni University vote 308 Sorot University vote 309 Guru University vote 310 Lira University vote 312 Uganda Management Institute and vote 313 Mountains of the Moon University. Uh, thank you. Now, honorable colleagues, report to uh, report to vote uh, to page 26 of the report. It has all details of what of the amounts of what the vote is going to do and all that. That will help. That will help. Honorable Amero. Thank you, right honorable chair. The procedure issue I'm raising is that wouldn't it be procedural right when the minister is reading out the votes to also give the amount because we agree that if there's any possibility we may vary. Now he's only reading out the votes without giving us the, the amounts. And for, for the handset to capture, right uh, honorable chair, please. Honorable colleague, the handset already captured the report. The report from page 26 has, uh, listen, the answer from page 26 has the vote, the amount, and the purpose. Colleagues, uh, let us read. Honorable on, Speaker, on, on I I think, Bumbi. Honorable Speaker, I think the minister has not done a good job. One, when you go, is it the total of 490 billion? Now, this man on the schedule, this is what it's supposed to be for. The man on the schedule is Minister of Defense, 90 billion for salary enhancement. Then there is salary enhancement for various votes, for both wages and salary enhancement. So total, when you go to, all, when you go to various votes for salary enhancement in local government, in the government, in where, in universities for scientists, that's a total it will amount to. That is, that's, that money is for. So, Honorable, I now put the question that the total sum of Uganda shillings 457-063-735891 be provided for as central government supplemented current expenditure for the financial year 2022-2023. Those in favor say aye and the content aye. The ayes have it. Refer hospitals. Honorable colleagues, I now propose the question that the total sum of Uganda shillings 9526-547-852 be provided for under referral hospitals as supplementary recurrent expenditure for the financial year 2022-2023. I now put the question that the total sum of shillings 23 billion, no, of, of shillings 9526 Five four seven eight five two be provided for under referral hospitals as supplementary recurrent expenditure for the financial year 2022-2023. Those in favor say aye to the content nay. The ayes have it. Foreign emissions. I now propose the question that the total sum of 2811276297 be provided for under phone emissions and supplementary current expenditure for the financial year 2022-2023. I now put the question that the total sum of shillings 2811-276-297 be provided for under phone emissions and supplementary current expenditure for the financial year 2022-2023. Those in favor say aye and to the content nay. The ayes have it. Local governments. I now propose the question that the total sum of 370-849-807-950 be provided for under local government as supplementary recurrent expenditure for financial year 2022-2023. Yes, Honorable Jonathan. Mr. Chair, I wanted clarification on the two votes under local government. Vote 
827, Butambala District, 1.5 billion, and vote 893, Mitoma District Local Government, 2.628 2 billion for 47 kilometers of roads. I wanted that to be explained first. Thank you, Honorable. That's under Part A of the schedule, not Part B. We are handling Part B of this. Under Part B, Honorable. Because I don't sit in a committee to process budgets. So let the chair run <laughs> first. Yes, uh, Chair, the issue which uh, members raised is under Part A, which you have deferred. Mr. Speaker, I've taken my notes very well. I looked at the figures, the ones that were under part A. I even have the items I wanted to query with their votes. The one that the committee wrote, that, that the one that require parliament to approve first, among them that I wanted to question is vote 003 under OPM, 1.5 billion, for commencement of land preparation for humanitarian base in Namanve. I have an issue with that. That's the so, second one, just to take you to the record now, is a vote 008, Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, under part two, two billion for EAC meetings on tax policy uh, conventions. Then I have vote 893, Mitoma District Local Government. The sum of 2,628 to do 47 kilometers of rehabilitation of roads. 47. And the roads are even captured. Yeah. So my issue was 47 billion to do only, uh, no, 2 billion to do only 47 kilometers of roads. That's why I was asking, but, that's why I was asking that I get clarification. But on, honorable, on, uh, uh, just, just let me get it from honorable Jonathan. On which page of the report? Can you refer us to the page of the report where you're getting this information? Because I don't see it under, I don't see it under B, which we are processing. Yeah, we are on B, you're saying it's in B. Show me the page of the report. Honorable colleagues, I now put the question. I now put the question that the total sum. No, it's not in the report. I can't stand on issues which are not in the report, Honorable. We are handling part B. You're putting us in part A. <laughs> and you say stand over an item. Yeah. Chair, 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 I can help on these monies. I don't know why the Minister of Finance and the chairperson doesn't come to explain. Now, Money is for local government that we are given the wrong codes, wrong codes. And local government could not spend those monies until parliament revolts and puts them on the right codes. Is the money being captured? Like in Butambala, Mitoma, what's the problem with that? I now put the question that a total of shillings 370849 807950B provided for under local government as supplemental current expenditure for the financial 2022-2023. Those in favor say aye and to the content aye. The ayes have it. Total recurrent. I now propose the question that a total sum of shillings 8402513679900 be provided for as total recurrent supplementary expenditure for the financial year 2022-2023. I now put the question that the total sum of shillings 840-251-367-990 be provided for as total recurrent supplementary expenditure for the financial year 2022-2023. Those in favor say aye and the content aye. The ayes have it. 
supplementary development expenditure for the financial year 2022-23, central, central government development. I now propose the question that a total sum of shillings 285-828-361-577 be provided for a central government development supplement expenditure for the financial year 2022-2023. I, I now put the question that a total sum of shillings 285-828-361-577 be provided for a central government development supplementary expenditure for the financial year 2022-2023. Those in favor say aye and to the continent. The eyes have it. Foreign emissions. I now propose the question that a total sum of shillings 1027-305-400 be provided for as total foreign mission supplementary development expenditure for the financial year 2022-2023. I now put the question that a total sum of shillings 1027-305-400 be provided for as total foreign emission supplemented development expenditure for the financial year 2022-2023. Those in favor say and to the content name. The eyes have it. Local government. I now propose the question that a total sum of shillings 397-854-104-501 be provided for as total local government supplemented development expenditure for the financial 2022-2023. I now put the question that a total sum of shilling 397-854-104-501 be provided for as total local government supplemented development expenditure for the financial year 2022-2023. Those in favor say aye to the content A. The eyes have it. Total development. I now propose the question that a total sum of shillings 684-709-771-478 be provided for as total development supplementary expenditure for the financial year 2022-2023. Clarification. Total development. It's a new term that probably the minister want to explain to us. What is total development? We've heard about uh, capital development and all that as development. So I, I need a clarification before before we approve, Mr. Chair. Now, Honorable, this is the total of the amounts we have passed for development component under central government, under local governments, under regional referral, under missions abroad. So we have the total development expenditure proposed. So it is the, it's a total for the development total. expenditure. Yes, yes. Uh. <laughs> uh, honorable colleagues, I now put the question that a total sum of shillings 684-709-771-478 be provided for as total development supplement expenditure for the financial 2022-2023. Those in favor say aye, and the country nay. The eyes have it. Total supplemental expenditure for the financial year 2022 stroke 2023. I now propose a question that a total sum of shilling, uh, a total term of shillings 1524-961-139-468 be provided for as total supplemental expenditure for the financial 2022-2023. I now put the question that a total sum of shillings 1524 Nine six one one three nine four six eight be provided for as total supplementary expenditure for the financial 2022-2023. Those in favor say aye to the content A. The eyes are Mr. Chairman, I beg to move that the House do resume and the Committee of Supply reports there too. Honourable members, I put the question that the House does resume and the Committee of Supply reports there to those in favour say aye to the country nay. The eyes have it.
report from the Committee of Supply. Honorable Minister for Finance. Mr. Speaker, sir, I beg to report that the Committee of Supply has considered supplementary expenditure schedule number one and passed it with amendments. Honorable, honorable, honorable minister, honorable colleagues, honorable colleagues, I think we need to clearly put it what we have captured, what we've covered, and then what has been deferred. We've considered part B only. Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, uh, please, let's listen to the minister. Mr. Speaker, sir. I beg to report that the Committee of Supply has considered supplementary expenditure schedule number one and has passed Uganda shillings one trillion five hundred and twenty four billion nine hundred sixty one million and one hundred thirty nine thousand four hundred and sixty eight and deferred all expenditures under 3%. Yes. Thank you. Yes, on, on, on our colleagues, just, just a correction. For, for emphasis, the figure again, for just for emphasis, because I read it. It's uh, Uganda shillings, one five two four nine six one one three nine four six eight one trillion five hundred and twenty four billion nine hundred and sixty one million one hundred and thirty nine thousand four hundred and sixty eight thousand uh, shillings. Sorry, shillings. Okay, that's what we have passed, which is captured under B. Now, whatever I'm also saying is being captured on the handset. So in case of any doubt, one will refer to the handset. That's why we extract it and we attach it on the resolution. Motion uh, for adoption of the report for the committee of supply. The motion that he, we asked him to, because he, he stated it that and stood over those under 3%. It's not under 3%. See, and stood over the 3%, not under three percent okay also let me because you see on top of the when they are uh, when they're extracting the resolution okay if for my emphasis and repeating again we extract a resolution and it goes with the handset so i want to emphasize and Kirak should capture it in the resolution that we only processed part two of the schedule. Okay? No that's it. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's, it's well captured. The other one was deferred. Yes. Yes, Honorable Jonathan. Mr. Speaker, again, I will try to persuade you when you say we have handled only part B of the schedule. The schedule to what? It is the schedule to a law we are processing, just like others. It, the schedule is to something else, and we cannot go to the schedule without addressing that law. And that's the point I've been trying to make, that you cannot pick the schedule, which 
is, is uh, dependent on something else and process it without addressing the, the substantive uh, bill which is before us. And you can see the confusion now when he says we have stood over. Committee. By practice, when we stand over something here, it means the process is not complete. You are expected to come back. And that's why I, that's why I told him that we have deferred. You see, the bill will come. So when we handle, when we handle the other part, we shall consolidate and get a bill and, and move forward. Okay? Yeah. Uh, motion for adoption of the report from the Committee of Supply. Honorable members, I put the question that the report of the Committee of Supply. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I've been, I thought he had already even moved. Mr. Speaker, sir. I beg to move a motion that the report from the Committee of Supply be adopted. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Honorable members, I put the question that the report of the Committee of Supply be adopted by this House. Those in favor say aye to the contrary. Nay. The eyes have it. Now, uh, Honorable Minister and Honorable colleagues, congratulations. Uh, I know, I, I know we might have taken Honorable colleagues, let's listen to one another. Honorable colleagues, let's listen to one another. I know we might have uh, we might have had divergent views, but all of you who had divergent views, I know what was very very critical was that we needed to put more scrutiny to money spent under three percent. Okay, how to reach on that is where we are having a difference. Some saying we do now, others saying we do later, but that was a major purpose for all of us. And uh, I believe we are going to uh, chairman budget committee, you will have to go back as a team. The budget committee, you sit, you look into these issues, you scrutinize further, and you ensure that indeed the house is satisfied. Uh, you bring a report which will satisfy the house on how money spent under 3% was considered. Yeah. Thank you, right, honorable speaker and honorable members. While we are processing the supplementary schedule, we moved under Rule 145. Sorry, 140, 140, 141. Yeah. One fifty three. I beg your pardon, we moved under one fifty three of rules of our rules of procedure. Consideration of a supplementary schedule. Specifically, we looked at the rule two, the supplementary estimate presented in sub rule one. Shall clear that one. Three, the speaker shall commit the proposed supplementary estimate to the budget committee and to each sector committee the part of the supplementary that falls within the jurisdiction of the respective sector committees. All this was committed to sector committees, and I guess we members of parliament we belong to sector committees. What we process here. There are reports from the sector committees. They reported to parliament. So again, we have to go back again to refer. I, I need guidance, right, on our speaker. Uh, Chair, you, you, you have time, okay? Go and consult. Yeah, go and consult. So if, if you reach us, if you eat a snack anywhere, we are available. We are guide you. Honorable Abdul, Honorable Muzari. Thank you very much, right, honorable speaker. Right or no, Speaker, I'm extremely happy by this conversation that has been going on. At last, the House is paying attention to this critical issue. And I thought that the Budget Committee Chair should have picked lessons. And I thought the Minister of Finance should have picked lessons. That there is something which is not correct with the way we have been considering the 
let this be the last time we have a, such a conversation. We should clean up our acts and colleagues. The only power to talk of about this institution is appropriation. Once we gamble with it, we are no house to talk of. Yes, yes, the eyes have it, yes. And sometimes it's like, okay, we've supplied, how much have we supplied for what reason? And we have not yet even critically addressed our minds to it. Right on the speaker to the Minister of Finance and to the Budget Committee, this should be the last time we have this sort of thing. We are not looking very, very good to the public. There is a very big issue, right on the speaker. We, we reject an item here as parliament. Then somehow the executive come and say, by the way, we nonetheless spent it under 3%. Can you do this? When we have, as a house or even committees have sat and carefully considered an issue and they said, no, 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 we cannot allow this. And the executive goes ahead spends money on the very terms we have rejected. Then they say, yes, you rejected, but we have spent it at 3%. This should, be, this should be the last time, especially to the ministers, those who are saying we are quarreling. Actually, this is a quarrel. What, right what, on over speaker. What, what, you know, when we are talking about taxpayers' money, they have entrusted that responsibility with us to make sure that their money is appropriated correctly, intelligently. Thank you. Uh, yes. I, I want to give... Point of procedure. I want to give the person... No, there is a procedure matter. Thank you, Mr. Right Speaker. Again, as odds, we allowed the Minister of Finance to partially deal with his supplementary schedule. And uh, right now, Speaker, my life, the fact that the house is full today, artificially, in some way. Uh, and uh, I am impatient, right now, Speaker, that we are here and there is a post supply debate when we still have members in prison. I'm running out of patience, right now, Speaker. You committed that you'll handle this matter and we address that matter, right now, Speaker. Would it be proper, right on the speaker, that we vacated that post supply debate and we address the critical matter of the rights of our members? Right on the Thank speaker. you. Uh, Honorable, I still stand by my commitment. Honorable Minister for Internal Affairs, we've dealt with this, we are done. Honorable Minister for Internal Affairs, before I allow anyone else, first tell us what has happened. And then, no, and then a uh, uh, lope comes. Are they going to Right, Honorable Speaker, and Honorable Members, um, you gave your guidance in the communication from the Chair, and I do say, and Lop raised his sentiments, and I want to say from the onset that I share the same sentiments and concerns. I watched with consternation that clip, uh, that brutality was absolutely not warranted. Even so, especially coming on the heels of Buvuma, which makes it even more objectionable. Uh, what we have done this far, and I'm surprised Lop says those honorable members are not yet released. We pass the instruction to release them unconditionally. And I'm going to follow through that one. Number two, Number two, I had people saying, I had, I had, I had members saying, I had members saying that um, the actions of colleagues, let's listen to the minister, and then we shall have a chance to react. Otherwise, we won't have, I don't know what we shall react to if we don't listen to the minister. I had sentiments, including that 
it is surprising that it was done at the gates of parliament. My view is that it shouldn't be done anywhere, whether in near parliament or wherever, and, and against anyone, not just members of parliament. So to that extent, action will be taken. I want to promise this house action will be taken and uh, we shall inform the house. Thank you, leader of opposition. Right, Honourable Speaker, I, I acknowledge the, the, um, the report of the Honourable Minister, but I would like to say that um, his orders are appreciated, but you should understand that orders on actions illegally done really do not matter. An illegality with or without an order is an illegality. And wait for action on the officer that have been handled these honorable members of parliament. For the record, right honorable speaker, the members are 11, and I want this to be on record, that when we are looking for culprits, they know the victims are known. The honorable John Namtawe, woman MP of Masaka district. The honorable Bet Ethel Nalima, woman MP of Wakiso district. The honorable G.H. Kakande Nakabuye, woman MP of Masaka city. The Honorable Manjeli Chebakutika, woman MP of uh, Ginger City and Deputy Opposition Chief Whip. The Honorable Nyakato Asinansi, uh, woman MP of um, Hoima City. The Honorable Joyce Bagara Antwatwa, woman MP of Mitiana District. The Honorable Florence Kabugo, woman MP of Kasese. The Honorable Stella Isodo, a plot, woman MP in Gora District. The Honorable Helen Nachimuli, woman MP of Kalangara District. The Honorable Hanifa Nabukera, woman MP of Mokono District. And the Honorable Joan Achom Alobo, woman MP of Salut City. The Honorable Speaker, this comes at the backdrop of what you explained in your preamble, your opening statement, that the Honorable Members had lodged a petition to the Speaker over this mistreatment. But not only speaker, they lodged the complaint in their own right. That complaint is not a legal battle, a public demonstration of their dissatisfaction. And they would like to uphold, and this is why I want to challenge the Honorable Minister of Internal Affairs to come here and tell the public whether demonstrations of a peaceful nature are illegal and unconstitutional in this country. That we can know that they have a new constitution we are not privy to. That actually we are operating under two legal regimes. One that applies to some individuals. I have seen a one general Mohozi, Haine Rugaba, all over the country, a serving mental officer, breaking the law, and nobody has touched him, even being escorted by ministers of government. I have seen NRM supporters demonstrating on several matters. I have not seen anybody touch them. Do we have the law for the NRM supporters and the law for those of the country around the speaker? Right, Lord Speaker, I would like to invite you. Well, as the minister says he made an order, I would like to ask of you to walk with that CPS and you see your members. And probably to work with the Honorable Minister to confirm that the culprits have been apprehended. You cannot do that. And can I say, Honorable Speaker, that the continuation of these activities are going to set this country on fire. And I will tell you, don't enter my house if you was on fire. I can tell you, you're going to be, all of us are going to be in trouble. Whether you are support of whatever project, whether you are support of what nonsense, you are going to be all in trouble. All of us. And unless a difference of what is right and wrong yeah. is stated. Yeah. Point of order. Point of order. order. Point of order. order. Point of order. Point of order. I'm the, I'm the one in the chat. No, point of order. There is a point of order. Honorable Guang, 
let's let's listen you see you see colleagues when you listen you know how to rebuttal but when you don't listen right on Ogwang, yeah right on was speaker first of all with due respect to my very good friend the honorable leader of opposition we are aware that this house operates on the decorum under the rules of procedure mr speaker is it in order for the right honorable leader of opposition to use the unparliamentary language of nonsense right honorable speaker is it in order now now on honorable colleagues you usually usually colleagues usually colleagues I make interpretations depending on the emotions I see running around. This is so painful to some people. If if they if they call someone nonsense, then I would have a problem. But if the situation that was happening is nonsense, but not a member being nonsense, not what is in the house being nonsense, okay, then I don't I, I don't have a, a problem. Thank no you, Speaker. Actually, Speaker. The biggest nonsense is beating up citizens. It's even your sense call for anybody to defend it anywhere, in any space, anywhere, whether on the street, in the parliament, anywhere. So I'd like to ask right on the speaker that you order this house to act on this impunity and we stop it. And I would like to ask on the speaker, if this is done again anywhere, on any citizen, I will lead any activity allowed under the law to make sure this house attends only to the business of ensuring the rights of citizens. Right on the speaker, I submit. Thank you. Now, honorable colleagues with the situation we are in, uh, honorable chief whip, uh, right honorable deputy prime minister, honorable chief whip, uh, the deputy attorney general, minister for internal affairs, a lop, uh, uh, and whips. Op Whips from the side of the opposition. Please, we are going to meet in my uh, uh, waiting area. How suspended for 10 minutes.
Thank you. Honorable colleagues. Uh, Honorable colleagues, let's resume our seats. We need order in the house. Honorable uh, colleagues, I want to thank you for the patience. I want to thank you for the patience for waiting for us as we consulted as leaders, uh, both in government and the house over the unfortunate incidents of today morning. I want to report as follows. Number one, as requested by the leader of opposition, our colleagues have been unconditionally released. I want to thank the Speaker of Parliament who has self drove the CPS uh, to fall upon the matter ensure that our colleagues are released and she even drove with them up to the precincts of parliament. So um, I want to thank her on that. And uh, Honorable Minister, I want to thank you for that commitment, for that order of which you had given. It's uh, really when you see the videos, they look ugly. They, there shouldn't be any sugar coating. And these people are not working for government. Right, Honorable? You need to go, you investigate. These are not people working for the government you have. And the people who, who are making this government get hated, our country get hated, they are saboteurs. You must go and investigate them. Hmm? Uh, number two, honorable colleagues, as you know, we agreed, as we had agreed earlier, the Prime Minister on Tuesday, um, I understand there is cabinet, but we shall, we, we, we shall work on it. But we had earlier said on Tuesday, the prime minister shall bring a statement with regard to this issue of stopping women's, women's Day celebrations when the Minister for Gender guided all female MPs, women district uh, representatives to organize Women's Day celebrations in their area. Tomorrow I'll be presiding over some. Now it's embarrassing. Some were stopped. I'm presiding over others successfully. You know, it's double standards. And we might look as if we are part of it. This is very, very, and I know the Prime Minister has also presided over some and the ministers and all of us. Uh, so um, we need the statement. Which statement should include today's incidents? Well captured and the action taken against these errant officers that are destroying the image of our country and government. Number three, as the leadership of the house, be constrained with what has happened. We find it difficult to move on. I adjourn the house to Tuesday at 10.